Happy Father's Day, everyone. I'm D Rex from Pyromaniac.com, and this is the Jay Cutler 2010 Fantasy Outlook video. I'm going to do my best as a you know pretty diehard Bears fan to distinguish uh, Jay Cutler, the player for the team I love and the team that I want to win the Super Bowl every year, versus Jay Cutler, the fantasy football player and uh, you know solid quarterback. Overall. Last year he had a great year. Uh, he ranked 12th in QB point fantasy points with 223.9. Uh, he had 27 TDs. Uh, he had 3,666 yards. These are all good numbers. I mean, I'm pretty sure that those passing yards are the most that anyone's ever had uh, for the Bears. Um, he did have those 26 interceptions, which is where I'll hold back on Jay Cutler, the quarterback of the Chicago Bears, and just focus on Jay Cutler, a fantasy football quarterback. Um, he's a true test in that way of, 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 you know, most people don't necessarily like him or aren't happy with his first season um, that are Bears fans, uh, whereas... Uh, fantasy owners that had him last year understand that even what, uh, what seemed like a pretty subpar year, uh, he definitely has tons of potential. Um, I've never been a fan of the guy. You know, when we did trade for him, we gave away two first round picks. We gave away Orton, who was our starting quarterback the season before and played great last year. Um, not great, he started out great and then kind of played pretty well, but he's a serviceable quarterback. Um, and we also gave away some uh, second and third round stuff for uh, Cutler. So we really gave away a lot to get him. Uh, the Bears haven't really ever had um, kind of a quarterback like Jay Cutler, so they wanted to take a chance on that. They're really trying to build a great team right now. They went after Julius Peppers with big money this offseason. They think this guy can bring it to them. Um, I hope that's the case. When he got traded to the Bears, though, I asked some of my Broncos fans, uh, know quite a few of them. I've got some friends that live in Denver um, and a lot of friends that went to um, University of Colorado, Buffaloes, and people weren't that sad to look, see him go, especially for what they got for him. Um, you know, people think this guy's kind of a bitch, he's kind of a prima donna, he doesn't uh, mix well with his, uh, with his teammates at all. Um, it, 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 it's all the things that I kind of thought about him as a player. He just kind of he can lose the game for you in a blink of an eye. I mean, last year I think he lost three games for the Bears in the last play of the game. Where if he makes scores a touchdown, he wins the game with a comeback victory, and as a result, he had three games where he uh, uh, threw an interception on the last play of the game. Very Favre-like in that way. He did have that great game against Favre and the Vikings, where he had a fourth quarter comeback and ended up beating the Vikings, which is a great game, and hopefully that's a sign of things to come. But I think this guy's going to have a major upswing uh, in production this year. Uh, you know, he can't, he's coming to a new team. He's coming to a new system. Let's be honest, he didn't have an all-world wide receiver like he had um, in Brandon Marshall in Denver. Uh, he kind of had a, a mixed match of wide receivers who turned out to be much better, and I, I, I think they're pretty good, um, especially with another year under their belt to work with each other. Uh, but last year he, he was taking a step down going from uh, Royal and Brandon Marshall to Devin Hester and Johnny Knox and Earl Bennett. Um, you know, McDaniels got rid of this guy. Um, he's trying to build his franchise. You know, he got rid of him last year and then this year he got rid of Marshall. And um, he, he just didn't like his attitude either. So we'll definitely, we'll definitely see what happens uh, in that regard. Um, you know, hopefully... I think the talent that uh, that Corton's got, uh, or Cutler, sorry, has is is pretty impressive. I think this Devin Aramadashu, uh, Arama, um I always screw his name up. I apologize. Number nineteen, this guy out of Auburn, six uh, two, seems very fast. He was catching everything. Um, he he seemed to be uh, Cutler's best favorite target last year. I think Hester's pretty good. Um, he can stretch the field. And Johnny Knox is fast as hell. He had a really surprising rookie year last year um, out of, uh, you know, Albion Christian. Uh, but he was like third rounder, and he was, he was great last year. He's got great hands, too. Um, he got uh, Cutler's good buddy, uh, wide receiver, uh, the tight end, um, Greg Olson, who he hams it up with around the Chicago hot spots in their plaid shirts, drinking it up, spending their money. And, whoa, do they have money. But Greg Olson, uh, he doesn't 
really fit into the uh, the game plan right uh, right now because they've got this new offensive coordinator, Mike Martz, who obviously has been a, a head coach and a, he was a championship uh, uh, offensive coordinator for the greatest show on turf. He hasn't had such a great run on some of his more recent uh, coaching stints, but I think he was just taking coaching jobs to take them. Uh, trying to, his last one I think was with the uh, Detroit Lions, but he's definitely a, <coughs> excuse me he's definitely a QB's offensive coordinator if there's ever been one. Um, so Cutler might fall out. You know he, he likes to have uh, two tight ends that are more blockers, which I think favors you know this uh, Callan Davis guy who's a six seven tight end who actually had a few touchdowns last year. Um, he's a big 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 dude, um, and I think I can see him in a lot of series and a lot of downs uh, just to protect some of that run game. You know let's move on to the run game. They got Chester Taylor in the off season. It's still going to be Forte's. Uh, you know he's still going to be the three down back. I see him uh, Chester being more of a uh, change change of pace back, but not necessarily you know a third down back. Maybe uh, you know Chester will get three series, and then maybe Taylor will get a series or something. They'll go with the flow on whoever's playing uh, well. You will see I'm wearing uh, uh, my my NBA headband bandana uh, in honor of you know it's, it's orange in honor of both the Broncos and the Bears. Because uh, we're doing Cutler right now, and I'm wearing it with the uh, with the emblem over my uh, left eye like this in honor of Allen Iverson, who's making a uh, comeback in the NBA for next year. I know there's a lot of haters out there, but I wish that guy the best. He's had a rough uh, rough year, or so um, and I, I like him. He's a good dude. So Cutler's got a cannon. We know that the guy can make any throw on the football field possible. You've got a year under the belt with their talent. You've got Mike Martz coming in. Uh, you know, we just got to hope that Mike Mars can turn the Bears' current uh, talent roster into the greatest show on, you know, grass or, uh, you know, whatever they got there over at Soldier Field and not into the greatest show of smug prickness because, uh, you know, that guy's kind of a jerk, Cutler, and you see he kind of points the finger at his teammates and I feel like the best quarterbacks ever, the Drew Breeses, you know, the Montana, the Bradys, they kind of always take it on their shoulders and don't start pointing the finger at people. That's not Cutler's way, and it's gotten into trouble with some of his teammates. Um, but you got other things you got to consider with the Chicago Bears are their run block was pretty terrible last year. Our uh, Pyro um, offensive line rankings, which are uh, coming out next week, um, run block they do their 26, which obviously isn't very good out of a total of 32 teams. But the pass blocking they're very good at. They're 12th uh, overall, um, and so that means they're a good pass blocking. Um, offense, which obviously helps Cutler and gives him more time. Um, you've got the Bears have a pretty tough schedule during um, fantasy playoffs. Week 14, they play the Patriots. I think that's I think that's a good game for them. It's going to be a gunslinger type game where I think Cutler shines in that. Uh, week 15 is against the Vikings. They obviously have a very stout defense, but. Cutler did have a good game against them last year, and I think you know there's no reason to think that he can't have a big game against the Vikings. Uh, it's going to be his arm that's going to keep him in the game, in my opinion. Week 16, uh, he's playing the Jets, which obviously is probably the best defense in the league. So if you were to make it to the championship game, which you should do in week 16 and not in week 17, um, but if you do make the championship game, you're playing against Revis, you're playing against Antonio Camardery, you're playing against... Uh, you know, a great, de a Rex Ryan defense, uh, and the Jets are pretty much the best. So that that that's that's a red flag. Um, but I think I think that that's really the only red flag that you've got. I think the the, the crew's the wide right receiver is going to be crew is going to be good. He's a bad leader. That's a knock against him. You know, he had a lot of expectations last year. He's got the same initials as. Uh, uh, J Jesus Christ, JC, and I feel like a lot of people in Chicago uh, really thought he was going to be the second coming. He had some moments, had a lot of downsides, but overall, you know, I think he's going to step up and um, become a much better player this year from Fantasy Bears quarterback standpoint, of course, but for sure from a fantasy standpoint. So there's no reason not to take him. Again, uh, Cutler, he's a starting quarterback in 8-12 to 12 man leagues. 8 to 16 man leagues, whatever you do. If you're in a league, he's a starting quarterback. This is the kind of guy who can blow up every game. Um, he basically, uh, you know, with Martz in the mix, he could be a Kurt Warner type. Uh, hopefully he's working on the offseason to make something like that happen, and he's not just uh, wallowing in all that money that we signed him right after a three interception loss. The Bears decided to give him uh, another $40 million or something.